Hello everyone and welcome to the lesson. We will be learning about sketching a cubic function. So a cubic function is in the form f of x is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now it's important before we start getting really stuck in with drawing these graphs there is a few things that I'd like to run through with you, especially around the orientation of your graph and the stationary points. So, when A is positive, all right, so A being your coefficient of your x cubed term. So, when A is positive, and let's have a look, we're going to look at when there are two stationary points one stationary point and no stationary points. So when we have two stationary points, the graph starts off by increasing. It gets to its stationary point, right? And after that, we begin to decrease past our points of inflection. What happens at the point of inflection again, grade 12s? Correct, your concavity will change. We get to our local minimum, that would be, remember that this is a local maximum, that's your local minimum, and after that local minimum, I start increasing again. If we have a look when there is one stationary point, again, our function begins by increasing. Now, this has a very unique name, a stationary point of inflection. So a stationary point of inflection, what that means is, what do you think? That the point of inflection and the stationary points are a shared coordinate, right? And the function keeps increasing. If we look at when we only have a point of inflection, right? There's no stationary points. Again, our function is strictly increasing. All right, so if A is positive, this is the orientation. This is what the shape of your graphs would look like. If we look where A is negative, so remember A, the coefficient of your x cubed term. If it is negative, right, what happens then? When there are two stationary points, our function begins by decreasing. We get to our local minimum our stationary point there. After that, we will begin to increase. Past the point of inflection where concavity changes, I'll reach my local maximum, and then I begin to decrease again after that. If we look at when we have one stationary point, so we call this the stationary point of inflection. The stationary point is a shared coordinate with the point of inflection where concavity changes. Right, so this function would be strictly decreasing. If I look at when there is no stationary point, but I do have the point of inflection where concavity changes, but A is negative, so what that means is strictly decreasing. Okay, so I want you to run through this first, because when you begin sketching your graphs now, you do need to have... Um, just to get like a general picture in your mind of what the orientation of your graphs are going to be. Is my A value positive or negative? Right? Do I have two stationary points, one stationary point of inflection or none? If A is negative, then I know I'm going to start off by decreasing. Okay. So it's valuable that we have this basic knowledge. Now moving forward. Let's get stuck into our first example. All right, so the first graph that we're going to draw is f of x is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared. So in order to draw this graph, we need to run through these four steps. These are the four things that we need to find in order to sketch our function. We need to determine the stationary points x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and point of inflection. All right, so I actually like to 
when I'm answering these types of questions, I actually like to first determine the first and second derivative. Remember, we're just going to use our lovely power rule here to find our first and second derivative. So the reason why I'm doing this is because I know that I need to find the first derivative to determine stationary points, and I need the second derivative to find my point of inflection. All right, so I'm just doing a little bit of work here at the beginning so that when I do my solving, it's all ready for me. All right, so let's start off. Stationary points. All right, so for your stationary points or your turning points, we let the first derivative, which we just determined, 3x squared minus 12x, you let your first derivative equal 0. All right, now we're just going to do some very basic factorization in order to solve for x. We need to solve this quadratic equation. All right, so therefore, x is 0 or x is equal to 4. Now, we have found the x coordinates at the stationary points. We need to find out the corresponding y coordinates. So, we're going to sub 0 back into the original question. So, I'm going to replace x with 0. That will obviously just remain 0. If I sub 4 back into the original question, so 4 cubed, 64 minus 6 times 4 squared, 6 times 16. Um, so that's going to be 96 minus 64. Right, sorry, 64 minus 96. So negative 32. All right, so your stationary points are 0, 0, and 4, negative 32. Awesome. So now that that's done, right, we can now go about, let's find our x-intercepts. All right, so for the x-intercepts, for all your algebraic graphs, if you think back to drawing parabolas, straight lines, exponential, for x-intercepts, what do we do? We always let y equal 0. Okay, this is pretty easy for me to solve here because I can see that x squared is a common factor. I'm left with x minus 6. Using my zero factor laws, x is 0 or x is equal to 6. Awesome. So those are going to be my x-intercepts. I've already noticed something here. One of my x-intercepts is the same x value as a stationary point. So this graph is going to turn on its x-intercept. Right, we'll see what that looks like. Okay, third thing. So this is the easiest one to do, the y-intercept. So in the, um, you know, with um, the cubic graph is y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. That d value, that constant, that's actually always going to be your y-intercept. Um, but we know that if we want to find a y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So it's going to be 0 cubed minus 6 times 0 squared. So our y-intercept is just going to be 0. Okay. Last thing to do, point of inflection. So the point of inflection, remember how do we find that? Yes, well done. You let your second derivative equal zero. And remember, we did that work over here already. So the second derivative is 6x minus 12. So 6x minus 12, and we let that equal zero. So solving for x, we get that x is equal to 2. So we need to find the corresponding y value here. So remember that we sub 2 back into the original equation, into x cubed minus 6x squared. So 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 squared. That's 8 minus 24, which is negative 16. All right, so therefore your point of inflection is 2, negative 16. All right, so we've done all this beautiful work 
all of this was for us to now draw this function. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a Cartesian plane quickly. So it's important that you know grade 12s, that your graph really doesn't have to be a work of art, right? It doesn't have to be drawn to scale. What's so important is the shape, right? We saw at the beginning of the video when I showed you those, um, the way that the graphs look, if there's two turning points, one turning point, no turning point, that shape is so important. So that's what I really want you to focus on. Okay, so... Um, we had a turning point at the origin, right? And at 4, negative 32. And at an x-intercept, like 6. So I'm just kind of like plotting these dots so that I can then kind of get my orientation. Since A is positive, right? So if we go back here, A is positive, 1. So when A is positive... Your graph goes increasing, then decreasing, increasing, right? Because we've also seen how we have two stationary points. So this is already how I'm imagining that my graph is going to look. So now if we go back down to where we are drawing, so it's going to increase, get to its local maximum, which is also an x-intercept and the y-intercept. Stationary point, we start decreasing. We're going to go past our point of inflection. We're going to hit that second turning point, our local minimum. Whoop. And we're going to come back up through the x-axis. And this is your graph. Oh my word, look how gorgeous that looks. Let's label these coordinates. So that's the origin. One of my stationary points, the x and y intercept. Here's my other turning point. Here's an x-intercept. And last thing we need to put on here is my point of inflection to negative 16. Do you notice how the point of inflection is halfway in between the two turning points? Isn't that interesting? All right, we've drawn our first graph. Oh my goodness, isn't this quite easy? Okay, so let's just quickly recap on here. We got our question. I started off by finding the first and second derivative. Once I'd done that, I started thinking about A. A is positive, so I know it's going to start off by increasing. When I find my stationary points, I determined that I had two stationary points. So this is the picture in my mind that I have already. I found my x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and point of inflection, right? And then when I have all of that, I get to draw this beautiful graph. Cool. Let's move on to example two. All right, here's my second example. f of x is equal to negative x cubed plus x squared plus 5x plus 3. All right, so remember I said I like to just first off find my first derivative using my power rule, negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. Remember when you find derivatives, how the constant falls away. Your second derivative... That's going to be negative 6x plus 2. All right, awesome. Okay, so now we can get stuck in. I like to start off by finding the stationary points. Why? Because I can then start to get that general image in my mind of what my function should look like. Also noting that A is negative, so your graph is going to start off by decreasing. All right, so for stationary points, we let the first derivative equal zero. Okay, so remember, um, you can obviously use a quadratic formula to solve here, um, but I mean, I really enjoy my factorizing and solving equations. So this is going to be 3x and x. It's going to be, that looks good. All right, so therefore, x will be 5 over 3, or x will be equal to negative 1. Okay, to find the corresponding y values, remember we're going to plug this back into the original question. So we're going to find f of 5 over 3, 
and we're going to find f of negative 1. We're going to replace x with those two values. So if I sub 5 over 3 into my question, what pops out is 256 over 27. So some of you might look at that and think, oh my word, this is wrong. How can this be my correct answer? But it is. So don't doubt yourself. Back yourself. You've got this. If I sub in negative 1, well, actually what happens is it just becomes 0. All right. So therefore, our stationary points, 5 over 3, 256 over 27, and at negative 1, 0. All right. So I'm thinking about my graph already. There's two stationary points. A is negative, so if A is negative and there's two stationary points, okay, that's the orientation um, that I have in my mind already for this graph. All right, let's get stuck into finding our x-intercepts. Oh, we're going to be factorizing a cubic, beautiful. Okay, so for your x-intercept, remember we let y equal 0, so 0 will be equal to negative x cubed plus x squared plus 5x plus 3. Um, I want to factorize, so I'm going to multiply through by the negative. Um, so it's going to be minus x squared minus 5x minus 3. All right, okay, factorize in cubics. So we look at the constants and we list its factors. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. Now remember, you grab your calculator here you sub in 1, negative 1, 3, negative 3, into x, right? And you find out which number, when I sub it into x, do I get 0. So in this question, if we sub in negative 1, right? Negative 1 cubed will be negative 1 minus negative 1 squared. Okay, perhaps let's write this out. So if I sub in negative 1, and I mean, the great thing is, you don't have to write this out, right? You can just punch this into your calculator. So this is going to be negative 1 minus 1. So it's going to be negative 2 plus 5 minus 3. We're going to get 0. Amazing. So when x equals negative 1, you get 0. So therefore, x plus 1 is a factor. All right. So if you sub in negative 1, so f of negative 1 is 0, so therefore x plus 1 is a factor. All right, so you've got that linear bracket. Now we need to get the quadratic. Okay, so um, let's figure out that first term. So we know that x times x squared will give you the x cubed. And I have positive 1 times what? would give me negative 3. Well, we need the positive times the negative to get that sign. And then 1 times 3 is obviously 3. OK, so now we need to go about finding the middle term in the, um, the quadratic bracket. So there's different ways that people figure that out. This is my method. So you must use whatever, whatever method works for you. This is my method. Okay, so what I do is I multiply these two together and I get x squared. I look at my question. In my question, the x squared term, right, is negative 1x squared. So I write that a little bit below, negative 1. Okay, I'm going to put the 1 there. You don't have to. So I'm going to ask myself, how do I get from 1x squared how do I get from 1x squared to negative 1x squared, right? I know that I need to subtract 2, right? 1 minus 2 will take me to negative 1. And now this, the coefficient of that x squared term, that becomes the coefficient of x in your quadratic bracket. Okay, and that's it. So if I just run through this again quickly, all right, I times these two together. I look at what the x squared term is in the question. 
and I ask myself, what do I add or subtract to get to that coefficient, to get to that number? And whatever you add or subtract, that becomes the coefficient of x in your bracket. Okay, cool. So now we need to, what are we doing? We're finding x-intercepts, right? So we need to now solve for x. So I had 0 is equal to x plus 1. Right, if we factorize that trinomial, it's going to be x plus 1, x minus 3. So therefore, our x-intercepts are at negative 1 or 3. All right, again, do you notice how one of your x-intercepts is also a stationary point? So this is going to be another cubic graph which turns on its x-intercept. Okay, well done. We're going, we're going much quicker through this one. Number three, three is our y-intercept. So in this question, here they've given us the value of d, right? d is the constant. So remember for y-intercept you did x equals zero. So all these terms are going to fall away since x is zero. So the y-intercept is so easy to find. y is just going to equal three. Okay, so fourth and last thing I need to find is my point of inflection. Okay, so for our point of inflection, what do we do again, Claire? Hmm. I find the second derivative. Oh, I did that already because I'm so smart. Negative 6x plus 2. And I let that equal 0. All right, so negative 6x will be equal to negative 2. So x is going to be 2 over 6, which is the third. Now remember we need to find the corresponding y value here. So we sub a third back into my original equation and when we sub a third in and we simplify it pops out as 128 over 27. All right so therefore our point of inflection is a third 128 over 27. So I mean really looking at some of these values that we found um, again, do you see how your sketch does not have to be a work of art? It does not have to be drawn to scale. Imagine working with these fractions and trying to draw to scale. You need to focus on the shape and the orientation. Is it going to start off decreasing or is it starting off by increasing? How many turning points on there? That's what's important. Okay. All right. So um, I'm just going to scooch this up so that I can draw a nice big graph for us this time. Okay, so a lot of the time you also get given Cartesian planes to draw on, right? I'm just making one for us. Okay, so let's have a look at the important information we determined. That our stationary points was a negative 1, 5 over 3, 256 over 27. Okay, so I've got over there, let me use a different color. Here's the negative one zero. Remember the negative one zero was also the turning point. I then had the y-intercept at three. Okay, so your graph is going to start off by decreasing since A is negative. It's going to hit its turning point, its stationary point, which is also an x-intercept. It's going to start increasing. It's going to go up to its second turning point. And then it's going to dip back down. All right, so that's your graph. Okay, let's label the coordinates. Negative 1, 0, that was a x-intercept and turning point, stationary point. Our y-intercept was at 3. We had a, another stationary point here, 5 over 3, 256 over 27. And then our other x-intercept, what did we find that to be? Our other x-intercept was 3. Okay, that looks good. And we can also just pop the point of inflection on here as well. Remember, point of inflection halfway in between your two turning points. Uh, let's put it over there. So 5, oops, not 5 over 3. That was a third and 128 over 27. Awesome. Okay, so that's your second example um yeah looking good let's go on to our example three 
All right, All right. So, so I actually just wanted, wanted to quickly use this opportunity, opportunity to show you how you can use your calculator, calculator to, determine to determine the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts. Okay. okay, so you're going to so press mode, mode set up, up and you're going to press file for equation. equation. So, so if you see there's our cubic, cubic. And, and that's, that's the parabola, parabola, right? right? right that's right, your that's quadratic, quadratic equation, equation, so that would be the graph of parabola. parabola. Here's, Here's your, your cubic, solving the cubic equation, so this would be able allow us to solve, solve for the x-intercepts. So we press 4. Alright, All right, so, so in this so question we just did, did it, was it was negative, negative x, cubed, x cubed, so negative 1 was a, plus x squared, so b would be 1, plus 5x, so c is 5, plus 3. So d would be 3, you press equals, okay, so we've entered all the coefficients of our terms and our constant d. Alright, right. and then it says x1 is 3, so that was 1 over x intercepts which we determined, determined. and then it was our second x intercept. Okay, okay. So, so if you if must, you can, you can use, your use your calculator, calculator to find x intercepts, but, but remember the question, the question specifically, specifically show, ask you to show how you find it, it. then obviously you need to use the method I did previously. Alright, here's our next example. So this already looks quite unique and different to the two previous ones that we have drawn. Um, this is kind of like, I don't know, freebie. <laughs> this is actually quite easy. So this is going to be an example where we're going to have a stationary point of inflection, right? So there's only going to be one stationary point and that point is also going to be the point of inflection. So if we work out um, x-intercept, so I know now this is a little bit different to what I've been doing previously. Hey, Previously I said let's find first derivative, second derivative, then let's look for stationary points. Um, but if you get an example or a question like this, let's have a slightly different approach. So we know for the x-intercept we're going to let y equal naught. So I really don't want you to um, expand the bracket here and add up like terms. It's like such a schlep, right? Rather, just solve like this. So we're going to cube root both sides. So the cube root of 1 is just 1, right? And then we're just left with x plus 2 on the right. So therefore, x would be equal to negative 1. If we find the y-intercept, remember, what do we do? We let x equal 0, so that's going to be 8 minus 1, so your y-intercept is going to be at 7. So like I was saying, um, so there is areas in AP Maths where we could differentiate this to find the first and second derivative and go from there, um, but what we can do is actually a really simple idea. If I look at this, x plus 2 cubed minus 1. If you think back to your parabola, right? Okay, remember that if I asked you to find the turning point of the parabola, you would look at this p value and the q value, and we knew that those two um, numbers would correlate or correspond with the values of the turning point. How you would take the number p and then just multiply it by a negative and your q value would stay the same. So we're going to do a similar thing here now. You're going to take these two values, all right, so your stationary point of inflection, um, let's just write that down, stationary point of inflection is going to be negative 2, negative, one. All right, so it draws on that same idea as when you need to find the turning point of the parabola when it's in that a x minus p squared plus q format, right? We just use the p and the q value to find the turning point. We're going to do the same thing here. So now we actually have everything we need to draw this graph. So let's get about doing it. Right, so what did we have? We had x-intercept at negative 1 and a y-intercept at 7. And then our stationary point of inflection, probably around about down there. Your a is positive, right? So if a is positive, 
and we only have one turning point or stationary point of inflection, that's what the orientation of my graph looks like. Okay, this one's like a little tricky to draw. Um, so you go up and you do a little like, and then you go up like that. Okay, so like I said, not a work of art, right? <laughs> but we do our best. And I label my coordinates, so then I say, you know, like, I know I'm right, man. Look at these coordinates I've determined. I know they're correct. Okay. All right. So, example three, um, very interesting looking graph. And remember that this one stationary point is also a point of inflection. So, we call that the stationary point of inflection. Amazing. Next example. I hope you guys are having fun. I'm having so much fun. Let's get stuck into example four, right? Just one more example after this. You're doing very well. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is looking a lot like just my normal straightforward type of cubic graph. So I like to find the first derivative, negative three x squared plus six x minus three. Second derivative, um, right, that's going to be negative 6x plus 6. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Cool. All right, so let's go. What did I say it's useful to find first? Yeah, my stationary points. Okay, remember, I like to start off with this because, so I'm also thinking about a. Okay, a is negative, so I know the function is going to start off by decreasing. And I'll need to find out are there two turning points or one stationary point of inflection or none. So for stationary points, we let the first derivative equal zero. Right, I'm going to divide through by negative three. So x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to zero. Ooh. Right, this is x minus 1 all squared, or we can just write it out like that. So we have one stationary point. So that's going to be a stationary point of inflection. All right, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to find the corresponding y value first. So we sub one back into the original equation and what pops out, we get eight, okay? So your stationary point of inflection is going to be one and eight. At this point, if we had to figure out or determine, hmm, well, maybe let's just do that. So I'm just going to show you that if I had to now, at this stage, determine the point of inflection, if you figured out that there's one turning point, right, then you know that this is going to be a shared coordinate. I should get this for the point of inflection. All right, but let's just check. If I let negative 6x plus 6 equals 0, Right, I get that x is equal to 1, and I've already figured out that f of 1 is 8. Okay, so yeah, I'm showing you they're the same. So when you have one stationary point, um, you actually already know that that is also going to be your point of inflection. Okay, but let's, um, we need to find what now? x-intercepts. Oh, I love finding x-intercepts because I get to factorize cubics. Um, all right, so three x-intercepts. Um, so we let y equal zero. So it's going to be negative x cubed plus three x squared minus three x plus nine. All right, I'm going to do, um, multiply through by the negative. So this is what I'm going to factorize. Okay, so remember now, the trick is, look at the constant. Let me scooch this over. You look at the constant and you write down its factors. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9. Now you get your calculator and you start plugging in 1, negative 1, 3, negative 3. You want to plug in until you get 0 out as an answer. So I'm not going to go through all of those with you. What happens though is when x is equal to 3, I get 0 out as a solution. All right, so 0, let's go back to my yellow, sorry. Um, so 0, if x equals 3, then I got 0 out as a solution. So therefore x minus 3 is a 
factor. All right, okay. Now we've got to sort out the second bracket, your quadratic bracket. Okay, so remember that we do have different methods here. So you use the method which works for you. I'm going to show you again how I do it. So obviously I say x times what gives me x cubed. So x times x squared gives me x cubed. Then I have negative 3 and I need to get to negative 9. So it must be the minus times a positive. We'll keep the sign as a negative. And 3 times 3 is 9. So this was my little trick of finding that middle term. Okay, you times these two numbers together and you get negative 3x squared. All right, you look at the x squared term, which is minus 3x squared. All right, so you look at what the x squared term is. So it's actually exactly the same. So to get from negative 3x squared to negative 3x squared, you obviously add nothing. So actually, we don't have a middle term in this quadratic, right? Your second bracket is simply just going to be x squared plus 3. So if I just had to rewrite this again, so it's going to be 0 is equal to x minus 3, x squared plus 3. So therefore, x is equal to 3. You can't solve that, right? You'll get x squared equals negative 3, and we cannot solve for that. So we only have one x-intercept at x is 3. Awesome. We're nearly done. What's the last thing I need? Hmm. Ah, oh, y-intercept. Right. So my y-intercept, what do we do? We let x equals 0. Remember that the value of d, that is your y-intercept. So your y-intercept is going to be 9. All right. So, I mean, if you want to go ahead and sub 0 into the, all the x's, that's fine. But your d value is your y-intercept. So, y is 9. Okay. Now I have all the information I need to draw this graph. My stationary point of inflection, 1, 8. My 1 in x-intercept at 3. And my y-intercept at 9. Okay. So, let's draw this beautiful thing. Okay. So, a quick Cartesian plane. All right, so let's see what this is going to look like. Remember, what was our a value? Our a value was minus 1. Okay, so my function is going to be decreasing. And it has that stationary point of inflection. Um, so it's going to go something like, like this. Oh, that looks so good. All right, so 9, my y-intercept. Stationary point of inflection. X-intercept. Oh, isn't it so much fun drawing these graphs? I'm having fun. All right, one last example, I promise. And then you don't have to hear from me anymore. Right, so example five. Um, this is a really interesting graph to draw. So I thought it important that we go through it. Remember, though, you're looking at your equation now, right? You're starting to think, okay, so A is negative. Um, so my graph is going to start off by decreasing. Am I going to have two, one, or no stationary points. We haven't done an example with the no stationary points. Um, but, you know, to find all of that out, let's start off by getting our first and second derivatives. All right, so that's going to be my first derivative. My second derivative would be negative 6x plus 6. Okay, we start off with stationary points, ideally. All right. So our stationary points, we know what do we do? We let the first derivative equal zero. Right, I'm going to factorize, so I'm going to divide through by negative three. Um, so I have, hmm, what happens now? So this can't factorize. Hmm, okay. Um, quadratic formula, help me please. Negative b plus minus um, b squared minus 4ac. Oh, these lines are skew. Over 2a. 
All right, if we simplify, so it's going to be 2 plus or minus, right, if I simplify that, it becomes negative 8. Hmm, so that's a problem. <laughs> well, what does it mean? Right, your discriminant is negative, so we know that when the discriminant is negative, that there are no roots, right? The roots are non-real. So this graph doesn't have any stationary points, um, but that's all right, because remember from the beginning of our video, I did show you that sometimes we're not going to have stationary points. We are going to have a point of inflection, however. Um, so maybe let's figure that out. So for our point of inflection, right, remember, what do we do? We let the second derivative equal zero. Okay, so I'm definitely going to be able to solve for x here. Right, x is one. If I sub one back into the original question to determine the corresponding y value, I get negative seven. All right, that doesn't look like a seven. Okay, so my point of inflection is at one, negative seven. Cool. Um, Got to find x-intercepts. So for my x-intercepts, we let y equal 0. So negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x. Um, I'm going to multiply through by a negative. I want to take out x as a common factor. I'm going to be left with x squared minus 3x plus 9. All right, so again, when I'm trying to solve for x here, x is equal to zero, this doesn't factorize. This discriminant is less than zero, so that means there are non-real roots. So I only have the one x-intercept at x is equal to zero, right? Because this is non-real, same as above. Okay, so we've got one x-intercept, we've got no stationary points, we've got our point of inflection. Last thing to find is the y-intercept. Remember that the y-intercept is your d-value. Okay, it's going to be zero. Remember, you just sub zero into x as well. And if we did that, we would just get a corresponding y-value of zero. All right, so now we have everything we need to draw this graph. So it's going to look a little bit strange. Um, but let's just get our x and y axis going. So a was negative, so it's going to be decreasing, right? It's x and y intercept is the origin and it has its point of inflection. So it's going to go like this. Okay, it's going to come down and it's going to go through and then it's going to get to its point of inflection. And we just change the shape like a little bit there after that point. Okay, it's a little bit, a little bit dicey, but that's fine. <laughs> Still looks good. So we've got the origin as a important coordinate label, and our point of inflection at one negative seven. All right. So that was your graph of G. Very interesting looking. All right, grade 12s, well done. You have done brilliantly to get through this video. And I hope you have lots of fun now practicing, sketching all these gorgeous looking graphs. And yeah, I hope that you have a good day.